Good morning and welcome to Hope. I know we still have a few moms in there enjoying muffins with mom. And I uh, just want to just give a great shout out to moms this morning and say happy Mother's Day uh, from Hope Fellowship. Uh, you know, I look back on my life and, you know, long story, but, um, you know, I come from a split home. And um, anyway, it, you know, I wouldn't be the man that I am today if it weren't for my mother. Uh, and I don't say that just because I lived with her, but um, I don't think I would have learned how to be compassionate from anybody else other than my mom. And that's there are several things that 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 mom uh, instill in their children that I don't think they understand. I can promise you that compassion, 99% of the time, comes from the mom, because moms are compassionate. And we love you, and we thank you for all that, that you've done and all that you do. Y'all are just special. So um, I just, I just everybody stand up. I want you to turn around and find a mom. Tell somebody Happy Mother's Day and just tell them, you know, we love you. Just let them know we love them. Even if it's not your mom, find a mom and let them know that we love you. I remember that when I was smaller, um, it was the moms that were in the household that taught how to worship, how to pray, how to be that, that, that person of God. So uh, this morning, I want us to honor our mothers. I want us to honor our grandmothers and, and all the mothers that we know. Uh, I want to honor them in teaching us how to worship by worshiping with everything that we have this morning. So, Lord, we give you everything this morning because you are everything. We thank you this morning for our moms, and we just praise you for, for teaching us through them. Lord, we shout your joy this morning, for we are full of joy. Just lift your voice and just tell him, thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for you are worthy of all our praise. Psalm 100 says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in his courts, or enter with thanksgiving in his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Y'all lift your arms this morning. We praise the name of the Father. Verse 5, verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. For great is the Lord who is worthy of praise. Great is your name forevermore. We bow at the splendor.
We call to you, King Jesus. Cause there's no sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Start singing that again. No sweeter. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name. Oh 
and shake before you the demons run and flee at the mention of the name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power in the presence of the mountain shake now the mountain shake
neighbor holds you back. You stir yourself up this morning. We ain't worshiping for nothing this morning. Bring it. Bring it. He's a great I am. Oh, he's worthy. Oh, he's a great I am. The mountains shake before you. The demons run and flee At the mention of the name King of majesty There is no power in hell Or anything that stands Before the power and the presence of The great I am The great I am
far I know that your hair is white as wool And I know that your voice, it sounds like waters Jesus, you're beautiful And I know that your eyes are like flames of fire I know that your hair is white as wool And I know that your voice, it sounds like waters Jesus, you're beautiful Know that your eyes are like flames of fire I know that your head is white as wool And I know that your voice It sounds like many waters 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 It sounds like many waters, like many waters. Jesus, you're beautiful Jesus, you're beautiful
Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Cause Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. One last time, sing it to him. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you know, this morning we're celebrating Mother's Day. And you know, moms are amazing. Moms are God's miracle of multitasking. And for all you men out there who are married and have your wife as a mom, if you want to know how differently you think, you just have to ask her, what are you thinking about? I did that once with my wife. I said, what are you thinking about? She said, well, I'm thinking about making dinner. I'm thinking about kids' church. I'm thinking about Sunday school curriculum. I'm thinking about her own kids' curriculum. I'm thinking about repainting the house, starting a business, how to solve the national debt and world peace. What are you thinking about? Peanut butter. <laughs> but this morning as I was thinking about moms, I just felt like I wanted all the moms to stand, and I want, if your children are in the service, I want the children to go to the moms and I want you to give thanks for your mom. Lay hands on her, out loud to her. Give thanks for her. And I want you to speak a blessing over her. So everybody that's a mom, I want you to stand up. You might slip to the Nile to give your children a... And if you got like more than too. one generation here, y'all just make a line and start with how, whoever you want to start with, but make sure you get it done. And for those whose children are not here, I'd like someone around them to lay hands on them. Moms, the miracle of multitasking. I Thank share, you, Jesus. I want to share this as we begin to pray for them, too. I read this the other day, and this is just an example. Dan's talking about how mothers think. I read the newspaper story of a young mother whose building caught on fire. She took her child in her arms and jumped out the window. She's crippled for life. They, her child's fine. They interviewed her. She said, I have no regrets. I'd do it again. She said, as long as my child's all right. That's how they think. That's how a normal mother thinks. So when you pray for your mother, when you pray for these ladies, just realize that this is a creature that God put in our lives that I heard that daddies help children face life the hard things in life and mothers help children not get hardened from the hard things Come in on, life. That's good. And so we want to bless these ladies this morning. You pray for them. So y'all children pray for your moms. Speak a prayer. Bless them. Give thanks for them. Anna. And you pray a blessing, and then I'm going to pray a corporate blessing over all the moms. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just declare moms favor, blessing. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. I just want to encourage all the children in here and all the youth and all, even if you're an adult and your mom is here. This morning as we were riding to church, my wife called and talked to her mom. And I thought to myself, I can remember when I was a kid and I never could imagine or think of a day where my mom would not be there. But today, I wasn't able to call my mom and just say, Mom, I love you. And I thank you. Recognize that time is short and take advantage of the time you have with your mother. Take advantage of the time to stay connected. Take advantage of the time to speak blessings and thanksgiving. Now for all of you mothers, if you would stand, I want to pray a corporate blessing over you. And if you uh, did not make it to the muffins to mom and did not get a rose, um, we want you to slip your hand up so we can give you a rose. Every mom that didn't get a rose. Bill, can you help David hand roses out? We have uh, we need one, two up in the balcony. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Make sure everybody that has their hand up gets a rose. Bill, we have some up the right-hand side. Keep your hands up, Mom, high if you had not got your rose yet. I felt like, uh, too, that the Lord wanted me to spe uh, specifically pray for any moms that have relationships with children that are estranged or that there is... Um, that needs to be, they, you need to be reconnected to that child. So everybody's got a rose? Not yet. Over here to the, Tyra is back here. There's another one. Freddie right there. Right on that row you're standing at. So everybody uh, that's around them, lay hands on the mamas. I just felt, we, does everybody have a rose? You have a rose? You got a rose, Holly? Holly needs a rose. Trish, you need a rose. Thank you, Jesus. We got more roses coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for mothers. We thank you, Lord, for these mothers. Lord, I just declare over them the oil of gladness. Lord, that any area, Lord, where there's been a broken heart, any area where there's been any kind of difficulty in the name of Jesus, I speak, Lord God, that this is a year of wholeness. This is a year, Lord God, where they see the fulfillment of dreams. This is a year, Lord God, where your blessing is on their home. This is a year, Lord God, where the provision that they need is right before them. This is a year, Lord God. I thank you, mothers. Ponder their dreams and their desires for their children. 
And Lord, I'm asking that every mother that's standing in this place, they see their child fulfill the fullness of what's in their heart. Reminded of Mary, where it says that she treasured the things that were spoken of Jesus in her heart. Literally means she kept them in order. She would think about all of the different words that were spoken over Jesus, all the different promises about Jesus, and her whole life, she kept those right before her. So when that moment came, she engaged her faith and said, now's the time for everything that I've kept in my heart for you to walk out. And I just declare that over these moms, that everything that's in their heart for every one of their children will be fulfilled. Lord, that their children will walk with the Lord all the days of their life. They won't get diverted. They won't get sidetracked. They won't get seduced by any other thing other than you, Lord Jesus. And that, Lord, their relationship is blessed and joyful with each one of their children all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. I just wanted to add to that prayer, and you can be seated, mothers. I just speak a refreshing over you. I see my daughters, my grandchildren at my house. I see my, my, their grandmother. And I say, I think what they need the most is refreshing. Refreshing in the middle of life to where you can't take a vacation. You can't say, I'm going to go do this, and you stay you stay here while I go get a break and get a refreshing. There's no escape. It's just there. It's life. But there is a supernatural refreshing that can come on you. I, I speak that on you today, that you would sense a tangibleness of his presence that will not go away, and it would refresh you to fulfill the call on your life. So important right now with your children. Amen. Ushers, you can come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we speak a blessing over this offering time. Lord, we thank you that you're the God of multiplication. Lord, you said that whatever we sow, you'll give it back, overflowing, without measure. So, Lord, as we put the seed in this ground, Lord, we're asking for multiplication. We're asking you, Lord God, to release jobs and better jobs. We're asking you, Lord, to release raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, debts decreasing, incomes increasing, scholarships and grants, housing and better housing. Lord, we thank you and declare that the spirit of poverty is broken over this house and over everyone in this building. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you for angels' release to tear down the stronghold of poverty, and we declare it's broken in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that you said we'll have all sufficiency for every good thing. And Lord, we just declare we're stepping into a season of radical abundance. And Lord, as you bring healing into our mind and our soul prospers, Lord, we declare the natural environment around us, starting with our homes, begins to prosper as well. In Jesus' name, amen.
give the Lord a praise. Thank you, worship team. Children, you are released for Children's Church. We're so glad that you decided to be with us this morning here at Hope. And if you're a visitor, if you could, there's a card on the bulletin that you got that you can tear off and fill out your information. That way we have the ability to get to know you, put, it, put you in our computer, send little guys with bicycles to your house and knock No, just kidding. <laughs> um, just wanted to, a few announcements if you're not coming on Wednesday night, you're missing it. Wonderful Wednesdays has been amazing. John Wilson spoke last week. Walter Hudson is going to be speaking this week. It's just really incredible. God shows up in a powerful way. And uh, so I encourage you to come on uh, wonderful Wednesdays. Also, if you're going to attend the men's breakfast next Saturday, need you to sign up. You can use the connection card as well and just check that you're going to be a part of it. That way we know how much food we need to have and uh, make sure we have enough and also vbs rec registration is now it's june 26th through the 30th so if you have a child that's going to go to vbs if you could uh, please make sure that you sign them up thank you and have a blessed day hallelujah well, yeah let's praise the lord for the announcement everything's blessed ronnie let me give you this we believe that the lord speaks to us through the creative arts and so Ronnie's been painting during the worship, and uh, he, he paints something that represents what the Lord's been speaking to him. I just want him to share that with us. All right, so I've got a lamp. Um, and um, I'm trying to see. All right, um, he was speaking to me about the verse with uh, the ten virgins, five that kept their oil filled, waiting on the bridegroom, and the five that didn't. And when they heard that the bridegroom was coming, they were prepared and the other ones were not. And they went to them saying, give us some of your oil. And the other said, no, we only have enough for ourselves. Go and buy. So when they went and bought, they came back. He was gone. They went and knocked on the door. Let us in. He's like, your oil wasn't filled. I don't, I don't really know you. And... I was reading a little bit about it, uh, what somebody wrote down, and what impacted me on it was, you know, that the virgins represented, like, um, people going to, the, you know, of course, going to the party, or, I mean, it could even be the bride, but back then, when you were going to, to the wedding, the ones that did not have their lamps, they were known as the wedding crashers. They were there trying to get in. They were the wedding crashers. And what he spoke to me on that was, are you filled up? Are you really keeping yourself filled up? Are you keeping yourself filled up with the oil, with Holy Spirit, with, with everything that he has? Or are you just sitting by being a wedding crasher? Are you sitting around not even ready to go in? Are you going to be able to see the bridegroom when he comes? And so the oil just, what I'm hearing is, are you going all the way? Are you giving everything you've got? Are you spending your money? Not money, but, you know, yourself giving everything that you've got to pour out to him when he comes. Are you going to recognize him when he comes? Is he going to recognize you when, when he comes? Are, are you going to be filled up to where you don't have to go to anybody and say, hey, I need to borrow what you've got? Because borrowing from somebody, I mean, that, where, where's that in your heart? Are you going to borrow your love to give to him? No. you got to pour that out. So are you ready? Are, are, you, are you going to worship him and pouring out everything that you have? And if you're not saved, now's the time. Now's the time. If you are not Amen. saved or if you're just going to church yeah. as usual, are you going to church just being the same? Or do you want something different? Do you want church different? Do you, you are the church. Do you want to be different? Are you filling yourself up with everything that he has? Or are you just doing church every day? Are you just living life every day? Are you allowing yourself to just let go of everything? So just continuously fill yourself up. Amen. The, um, thank you, Ronnie. If this uh, painting speaks to anybody 
and uh, you feel like you need to have that hanging in your home or something, you see Ronnie after the service, and he can arrange for that to happen. I've even known him to paint duplicates so that more than one can have one. So uh, he, that's what he wants to do with it. So, uh, and that goes for these other paintings that are still up here on the front. If, the, if one of those speaks to you and you want that, uh, God will uh, bless bless sometimes through a painting it reminds you of something that you want to be reminded of about the Lord so there isn't a, a time in the economy of God when it's too late that's what that parable teaches us you say well God's all merciful it's never too late yes it is we, we do know that the thief got in on the cross so you can be really 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 late but there is a time when it's too late <laughs> the other thief was thinking uh I heard, a, I heard a man say, I'm going to be like the thief on the cross and give my life to God in the last two minutes. And I heard the preacher say to him, there was two thieves on the cross, the one's still burning in hell. You don't have a choice sometimes about your repentance. You have to repent when the Holy Spirit gives you that opportunity. So just, if, if you, we're going to, after the service, there'll be people here to pray. If you need to get something right with the Lord and give your life to the Lord, there'll be people down here, don't leave here today without doing that. I want to talk to you just a few minutes and then I'm going to have Trish, our children's director, come up and we're going to dedicate babies today. It's a fitting day to do that but I want to kind of set it up for her and then she'll speak to you about what all that means but um, there was a, um, a um, let me go back and, and read this passage of scripture and uh, not get ahead of myself. In, in Matthew 18, I didn't give the scriptures to anybody up there, but this is a familiar um, passage. It says, At the time the disciples came to Jesus, this is uh, 1 through 5, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and come as, become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as is a as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Little children, I wish I could have uh, arranged it to have my four-year-old grandson come up here as I was reading that. Uh, I told him this morning, I said, uh, Cash, can you do anything without such enthusiasm? And he got, he got Papa. I'm going, but everything he does is with such enthusiasm and such fervor, and life is just there to be taken and enjoyed and tasted of, and that's something that children bring to our lives, and uh, something that we need them around us, and we need them to be stirring us up to uh, the awe of life and God and 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 great things, and so. Uh, but I want to uh, go into this with this. Uh, thought there was a um, doctrinal thesis uh, presented in 1963 by a man named Edward Lorenz, uh, and it was presented to the New York Academy of Science, and they laughed him out of the place. It was called the butterfly effect, and it basically stated that when a butterfly flaps its wings, I'm getting just a, a bit of an echo up here. That's um, I don't know whether it's me or the the, the mic, but um, the wings it sets air molecules in motion that in turn move more air molecules until potentially they can affect the weather patterns on the other side of the world. That was, that was his idea. And that uh, hypothesis was considered ridiculous and regulated to comic books and sci-fi movies for 30 more years. And um, then quantum physics professors got a hold of it and they realized and proved the accuracy of it. it. Turns out it's one of God's principles written into the fabric of the universe like seed time and harvest or even the law of gravity. Given a long complicated name, it has been accorded the status of a law. It's called the law of sensitive dependence upon initial conditions. Science has proven that its effect is activated with the initial movement of any form of matter including people. That's me and you. In other words, what we do now can have an effect way out there somewhere, in the future, different parts of the world. Edward Kimball was a Sunday school teacher in the mid-1800s. He was concerned about one of his Sunday school students who worked at a shoe store in town. 
His initial impression of this young man was not very encouraging. He wrote, I can truly say that I have seen few persons whose minds were spiritually darker than was his. But one day Mr. Kimball decided since he wasn't reaching this student in class, he would go to the shoe store where he worked and he found him in back of the shoe store uh, stocking shelves and he put his hand on his shoulder and he did his best to lead D.L. Moody to Christ. He left there thinking he'd failed. But he didn't fail and eventually D.L. Moody left the shoe store and became one of the greatest preachers and evangelists of all time. He founded Moody, Moody, Moody Bible Institute and Moody Church, a great church that sends thousands of missionaries all over the world. As God would have it, on one of his international speaking engagements to the British Isles, he preached. He preached a little to, in a little chapel pastored by a young man with an imposing name of Frederick Brotherton Meyer. Frederick Brotherton Meyer heard D.L. Moody talk about his Sunday school teacher, Mr. Kimball, and how he made it his personal responsibility to lead every one of his students to Christ. His soul was set on fire through Moody's passionate message, and that day F.B. Meyer answered the call to be an evangelist also, and then as God would have it, several years after his ministry, uh, several years after his, he, he was in ministry, his, his uh, ministry brought him to America. While speaking in Northfield, Massachusetts in 1886, F.B. Meyer made this, this simple statement, if you're not willing to give up everything for Christ, are you willing to be made willing? And it pierced the heart of J. Wilbur Chapman, who was already an ordained minister. J. Wilbur's Chap J. Wilbur Chapman's wife had recently passed away, leaving him confused and discouraged. But later he would say that one remark changed my whole ministry. I, get, I break up at the weirdest times. I don't know why certain things touch me. But it seemed like a new star in the sky of my life, a statement made by a preacher put this man back on course. He went on to become one of the most effective evangelists in the late 1800s and early 1900s. By 1913, it was estimated he had preached 50,000 sermons to some 60 million people. This is before television. One notable individual he had great influence on was a young Major League Baseball player named Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday had gotten saved after he was impacted by the songs and the preaching of a Salvation Army team ministering on the streets of Chicago. He had gone to harass them and mock them, but got convicted, and at the mission that night surrendered his heart and life to Jesus Christ. He went to work for Wilbur Chapman to help set up his crusades, and, and on the side he was learning how to preach by watching him preach. Eventually, Chapman turned his whole ministry over to Billy, and he became one of the, the most dynamic and effective evangelists of this century, bringing thousands to Christ. In 1924, a group of Christians in Charlotte, North Carolina, had dedicated themselves to reaching their city for Christ, and so they invited Billy Sunday to come and hold some crusades there. During one of his services, a Jewish man named Mordecai Ham came forward to profess he had found Christ as his true Messiah while he was studying the Bible for himself. In 1932, the Christian Businessmen's Committee of Charlotte, North Carolina, invited Mordecai Ham to hold a series of evangelistic meetings. And as God would have it, a 16-year-old uh, young man sat in the huge crowd one evening, spellbound by the message of this white-haired preacher. And each evening, the preacher seemed to be shouting and waving his finger directly at him. But he kept coming back night after night. And finally, this young, lanky teenager turned his heart <laughs> over to Christ. His name was Billy Graham. Billy Graham has communicated the gospel to um, millions upon millions of people, more than any other person in history. And as God would have it, it started with a Sunday school teacher named Edward Kimball. I could go on and I could say there was a young farm boy in the middle of Kansas whose Catholic mother 
decided that he needed to watch Billy Graham preach. He turned on the TV set, a little 12-inch screen, and made us sit there and watch Billy Graham. And I thought, I can't understand what he's saying. What's he talking about? What's everybody so worked up about? Yet it was planting seeds in my heart that later on, when the crisis hit my life at 21 years old, something had been sown there the way I turned my life over to Christ. Started with a man that said, I'm going to be responsible for every one of my students that they have an opportunity to come to Jesus Christ. His name was Edward Kimball. Today we have an opportunity to flap our wings, have the butterfly effect, and live a life of significance and make a difference in the world around us and especially into the future. There's generations yet unborn whose lives will be shaped by what we do or don't do today. Our actions and our service cannot be hoarded or saved for a better cause because millions of lives will be caught up in a chain of events begun today by us honoring these babies and, dedicate, and honoring these families and dedicating them to the Lord and then dedicating ourselves, and Trish will go over this, to uh, uh, serve and bless every opportunity we get and give them the opportunity to give their lives to Christ and serve Him. God's intention is that they be brought up in the way of the King and His kingdom and have influence in many more places than before they were here. We have the responsibility to give our children every opportunity to grow up with a serious case of hope in God. I want our children's director, Trish Blackshear, to come and share now with us. And I want you to honor her as she comes. She is one that is hands-on on us having an impact on these children's lives. So let's honor Trish. Thank you, Trish, so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think it is significant we do baby dedication on Mother's Day because as mothers, mothers are spending lots of their time investing in this. And um, when I was thinking about this, I thought about a story that I had heard and I read an article. It happened a couple years ago. A guy named Matt and his girlfriend Kayla went out to dinner one night to, he was going to propose to her. And so they walked outside the restaurant down this long pier and um, everybody inside the restaurant's looking through the windows watching this. And um, they see him get down on one knee. And everyone's really excited to see what happens. But when he opens the box, the ring falls out of the box and falls through one of the slats into the ocean below. This was in North Carolina. Matt freaks out. He runs into the restaurant screaming, does anybody have goggles? Does anybody have goggles? Kayla covers her face and just breaks down crying. Of course, people in the restaurant at this part, this sweet, significant moment becomes pandemonium because they realize that this thing of super high value, this diamond ring, has fallen down into the ocean. So what happens? People jump to the rescue. In a matter of two hours, 10 people went diving down in that water under that pier and looked and looked and looked for that ring. So after two hours of diving and at five pairs of goggles, finally somebody screams, I found the ring! I found the ring! Well, at this point, everybody's out on the pier, and everybody is celebrating that this ring has been found. Matt is covered in mud and salt water as he climbs back onto the pier, and everyone in the restaurant that had been watching this and had been helping it happen starts chanting, propose again, propose again. So as filthy as he was, he gets down on one knee and he proposes again and everybody celebrates. And I think the reason that this story really stood out to me is because those people gave up two hours of their night. They were at that restaurant to eat dinner. They were probably on their own dates. But for some reason, they decided they were going to jump in that salty water they were going to pull out their flashlights. They were going to dig in the mud and look for a ring. Why? Because it had value. Because it was significant. It meant something. And when there's something of significance and high value, people will inconvenience themselves. They'll get dirty. They'll invest their time. They'll invest their emotions in it. And isn't that what we're doing here with these children? 
They have significance. They have value. They're worth the investment of our time. It means something. So where does that put us as a church? Well, we have an opportunity to support these families as they're bringing these children in that are so precious and so valuable. We also have an opportunity to invest. We may not be the ones waking them up in the morning and making them breakfast, but we can be the ones that are saying encouraging words to them when they show up at church, that are loving on them. We can be the ones that are encouraging the parents, like Pastor David said, sometimes they just need refreshing. Sometimes they're just tired and they're worn out. And sometimes maybe a mom just needs $20. Go take your kids to Dairy Queen and y'all have ice cream sundaes together. I know when I had young kids, I would be in the middle of Walmart with my kids falling apart, ripping open a bag of Oreos, thinking everybody hates me. Everybody just wants me to leave. We could be that person that walks up and says, you're doing a good job. Good job. So we do baby dedications because it gives us an opportunity to support these parents while these parents are saying, I'm making the commitment to raise my child to love and know God. I see the value and the significance, and as a church, we also see the value and significance. And one other quick thing that I can't seem to get past, um, because, well, you'll find out in a second. I woke up in the middle of the night, thought it was a little bit too warm in the house, so I was going to get up and adjust our air condition. Well, I probably should have made sure I was fully awake because as I was stumbling to the air condition, apparently, miraculously, my door frame jumped in front of me and body slammed me. And so <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have a broken toe. It won't let me forget because I was determined to wear these shoes. But um, as I was getting dressed this morning, trying not to limp, um, I thought, this is ridiculous. This is a small toe. How come it's such a big deal to me? It's small. It is affecting the entire rest of my body. But I felt like God said, yes, it's small, but it's weight-bearing. We're not going to talk about how much weight. But it's weight-bearing. But that's just like these children. They're small. We think, but it's not significant. Right now, they're small. Sometimes they're not even visible. Sometimes they kind of get lost in the shadows. But God says they're weight-bearing. They're bearing the weight of the future. They're the future of this church. They're the future of this world. They're weight-bearing. They have significance. And so this is why we do this. We want to support these parents as they're raising their children. We recognize the weight that these children carry. It's a big job, and God's up for, the, God's up for it. He's going to walk with them through it. But as a church... We support them in this. So I'm going to call the parents up. We have um, a couple that couldn't be here. Some, some of them woke up sick this morning and they didn't make it. But parents, if you will just come when I call, we have Dustin and Dean. And they're bringing Abel, Abel Donald. Ramsey is here, right? I think that he wants Beckham. You want to do this again when Beckham's here, right, Ramsey? Mm-hmm. Beckham's sick this morning, so we need to be praying for Beckham. This is Dusty and Dean, and this is Abel. Abel's siblings are Seth and Savannah. I think they're in kids' church right now. Guys, if y'all just want to come stand right here. Okay, we also have um, Philippa Mateo, and she is dedicating baby Abigail. And Ronnie is going to come, and he's going to help to do translation for her. So is Philippa here? Oh, there she is. Abigail's brother's name is Andrew. He's going to come up here as well. He can come up, Ronnie, if you want him to. Oh, he's going to go to Holly. Okay. We also have Nathan and Mallory Peacock. And they are going to dedicate Carter Beckham. got a cool horse with him okay and Dusty and Leanne Roberts and they are bringing Caleb Leonidas mm-hmm. okay 
So parents, real quick, I want to talk to you. By dedicating these children to God, you are relinquishing your right to ownership of them. You're giving them to the Lord. You're making a commitment that these children will be brought up knowing who God is, knowing that he loves them, that he has a purpose for them. And that means asking God, what are the gifts, the talents that you've put in this child and raising them in a, in a way that would develop those gifts? Creating a home where children learn and know who God is is our, our greatest priority. So um, parents, we've asked each parent to come up with a scripture and even a prayer that church, um, giving you an opportunity to lift them up on the things that God has put on their heart. So they're going to share a scripture and also something that we as a church can join with them in praying for them, not just today, but even beyond today. So I'm going to give them an opportunity to share. And this is, um, this is Dusty and, Teen and Dean and baby Abel. Good morning. Okay, can y'all hear me? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet in this nation. For Abel, all I want is for him to grow up knowing the Lord. I've got three kids, and my other two wasn't brought up like I want them to. They're here now, and I plan on doing this one a little different. And through this church, I hope that y'all support us and, and help me to help him grow in the Lord. Thank you. Okay, and this is Philippa. And she's dedicating Abigail. Voy a leer el Salmo 17, el 8. Guárdame como la niña de tus ojos, escóndame bajo la sombra de tus alas. Amén. So she's reading Psalm 17, verse 8. The Spanish is just a little bit different than the English, but I found one in English that's close to it. Keep me as the apple, and in Spanish it says this, the daughter of the eye, in shadow of thy wings, thou dost hide me. This is Nathan, Mallory, and baby Carter. All right, our, our verse uh, for Carter is, is Luke 2.40. And, and the child continued to grow and become strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Um, for those of you who don't know, Carter's our, our third, third son, and not the most special one, but He's definitely uh, a special one. He, um, we've had we had trouble uh, very early in pregnancy. Um, he came at 27 weeks. He was two pounds. He was really little. I mean, and we just had to. We'd go to the NICU. Mallory was there day in and day out, pretty much. And um, I, I can't thank y'all enough for all the prayers because I know that he wouldn't be here um, if if you guys weren't praying praying for him. So. Um, but he's, he is a miracle, and he's just growing every day, every day. It was always looking at the chart in the, in the NICU and, and, you know, seeing has he, has he gained any weight, has he, you know, has he picked it up. And now he's just, he's taking leaps and bounds. So we're just, we're grateful. Thank you all. Hey, this is Caleb. And uh, we have the same bird, Luke, two four, same bird. <laughs> Listening to the Lord up here. Um, but that's also our prayer for Caleb, that, you know, that he would grow strong and uh, have wisdom and the favor of God would be on his life. Okay, awesome. That was Dusty, Leanne, and Caleb. All right, parents, I'm going to ask y'all to repeat after me this prayer, please. Okay, Father God, we trust you. We dedicate our child to you. Whatever you want, and then say the name of your baby, to be. We release them to your perfect plan. Help us to recognize and develop the calling you've placed on their life. 
in Jesus name okay in church I have a prayer for you too because you are so much more than spectators to this you're part of this you're part of this church family and part of their families and so as a church we want to commit to supporting them so church if you can repeat after me father God at this time we dedicate ourselves by your grace to commit to do whatever it takes to create an environment in our church and community that models to these children what it looks like when you get to have your way. Amen. Okay, now could I have the staff and all come up? We want to pray over them and pray a blessing over them. I'm not sure if there's some music that we can play in the background. But we want to pray over these children, um, and, and then we'll be released. Church, if you could participate as well, maybe stretch your hands and pray for them as well.
the seat of our pants, meaning we, we really do a lot of uh, conflabbing, our, uh, our brother out in uh, Texas calls it. Why don't you stand? I bless you today. I know there's uh, uh, dinners and activities you want to do with Mama, so I'm going to release you in the blessing of the Lord, and I appreciate your patience as we bless these children. Uh, one of them smiled at me, so he's he's the one that I'm favoring now. No, no we, we're going to... We're going to favor them all, we're going to love them all, and we're going to create an environment. Listen, I want to thank you for sowing your time, your talent, your treasure in a place that can incubate history makers and world changers. And if you don't think we're doing that, you look at some of these young teens that are winning world championships. They're, they're, uh, they're on the stage of the world's eye, and they honor the Lord while they do it. They're, they're praying in front of the cameras. And uh, this is just a big deal, and we want to see more of that happen. And so, Lord, we thank you for these parents and for these that come and, and sow into this place for where we can be that place that raises up a legacy that goes into the future and advances the kingdom of God out there in the future where we'll never be able to go. But, Lord, we'll give you the glory and honor and praise, and we'll get the fruit of that uh, tallied to our account because we sowed into it. In Jesus' name, I bless these mothers today. And the rest of the day, Lord, let that refreshing be something that's so supernatural they can't deny it. And let it come in the midst of all the busyness. In Jesus' name we pray in your glory. And all your people said amen. Amen. There are those that will pray for you. If you need prayer down front, please come down and we want to pray for you.